All right, so let's take a tour of the full site editor. If you don't know how to locate this area, I'll jump back out to my WordPress dashboard. It will be under Appearance, Editor. That's where we can launch into that interface. We'll also have Edit Site on the front end of our website as an option. If you want to launch into editing a specific page, you can do that from Edit Site up there at the top. But I'm going to go back over to Appearance Editor. And we have five options here. Let's go through quickly what each of these options are. So the navigation edit page allows us to change things like my navigation up here at the top. If I click in there, I can see a little bit of an outline as to what's, what's going on here. My courses has a, a few drop down items beneath it. And if I go back out here, I can click the little pencil icon and then go into the block editor. I can also see over on the right my navigation block and add new items down here at the bottom. In addition, if I open the list view, I can see the nested blocks and I could add a block over here. So there's a lot of ways that you could add um, blocks to your navigation menu. Uh, and this interface has been updated a lot in the last six months, and I assume it's going to be updated a lot in the next six months. So it might look a little bit different on your end. So I'd encourage you to play around with it a little bit to edit your menus. But over on the right hand side, this is where I like to add my links. So if I were to add uh, maybe a custom link, and we'll say, um, we'll just leave it blank for now, but we'll say start here. And instead of leaving it blank, let me go grab a link to one of my lessons. And this might be the first lesson of my first course for people to start on the website. If I just copy the link, that's not what I wanted to do. Copy link. Copy link address, drop the URL there, click save. And now I have start here linking to the first lesson in the course uh, on my website there. So let's see if that reflects over on the front end of my website. If I reload, we now have the start here button that will appear for people to jump into the first lesson of my course as an example. But that was uh, just one way you could edit the menu if you wanted to add a new item under the community tab. You would just add that item just like we added start here and then you could drag it up to the be beneath the forums and actually i would like it to be kind of like that so if i wanted it to be under the forums in my community drop down i can do that there's start here and so a lot a lot of customization can be done i like to use this right hand panel but there are ways to navigate with this list view uh, like i mentioned we could edit from here we could also edit over here in the middle. So a few different ways to do the same thing, but that's generally how you can navigate your navigation uh, menus. And when you're going to create a new menu, you can do that from the appearance menus area, and that will be on the back end of WordPress. Appearance menus is where we'll usually create our menus. And then if you want to update a menu in full site editing, you do it back here from the navigation. Let's take a tour of the next part, which is styles. Styles is going to primarily be over here on the right side. We can determine things like topography for our elements on a website, like general text. We can say, what's the font size? What's the font family? And what does the line height look like? Some basic styling options there. We can change what our link color is. We can change some uh, sizing for links. We can change uh, the basic stuff like that. And then also buttons. We can determine font family, size, and some typography there. So styles are relatively basic at this point. You have topography settings, color settings for your text, backgrounds, links, captions, buttons, etc. And you also have some layout settings for styling, such as your default content width, and also some default padding and spacing options for your blocks. So you could space blocks uh, close together. You could space them a little further apart if you'd like. Um, but just how, how densely packed do you want your website to be and what kind of content width settings would we be looking at? So if I went wide, if I wanted it to be a thousand pixels wide instead of, that was probably about 1200 before, I could determine that right there in the content settings as well as content height settings. So jumping out of the styles, that's where we would determine colors, topography, and spacing settings on a global level. We can also tie, dive into pages. And so these would be the individual pages on our website that we could customize. So if I wanted to customize the Lifter LMS student dashboard page, we can see some general statistics about the page, time to read the words, the template that it's using. And if I wanted to edit this page, 
I could uh, add some content in there. You can also access this um, from the, the pages add page area, but this will be the, the styling for my uh, dashboard page from a style perspective and um, from some general higher level layout stuff. And I think I can also add content here as well if I want to. So um, a lot of different ways you could customize that dashboard page. So they're just adding this into this interface so you can get familiar with uh, designing from, from this side of things, from the appearance edit site area. Uh, so then in addition to pages, we also have templates. Templates are a little bit more complicated than pages, but this is a really cool, new, powerful thing. In my opinion, the most powerful thing that is unlocked with this full site editing framework. For example, if I want to edit my single lesson layout, this would be the lesson layout for all the lessons on my website. And so if I go into one of my courses, let me go from the back end of the website, and I go to courses lessons, we should be able to see if I edit any of these lessons. On the right hand side, it tells me what template my lesson is using. It's using the single lesson template, which is the one we're editing right here. But we could also create a new template for lessons if we wanted to. Uh, let me just first edit this single lesson template and show you how this would work. If I wanted to say, um, what would I want to do here as an example? I might, this, is, this will be the title of the lesson. If I open the navigator, this will be the title of the post. This will be the content of the lesson. And those will be the blocks that are in that lesson specifically. So in this lesson, the content would be these paragraphs and the mark complete button. That's the content. And then the title, of course, is up here at the top. But uh, what if I, if I wanted to move the title beneath the content, as an example, I could do that. And so when I view my lesson, since it's using the single lesson template, it's going to throw the title down beneath the content. But we probably wouldn't want to do that as a change. We might actually want to do something like uh, send our customers a message and say, um, maybe in a paragraph block, say, hi, first name. We'll use the Lifter LMS first name shortcode. You're doing awesome. Save that. And reload my lesson. So if I come back to the top now, I'm logged in as Arthur Wells. So it says, hi, Arthur, you're doing awesome. And, and that might be an example of personalization we would add to the lesson content. And no matter what lesson I go to, because I'm updating my template for all lessons, that change will apply to all of my lessons. And this is where the template system becomes really powerful, is we just edited the template for all lessons, but what if I wanted to create another template for lessons? I could do that if I go to templates, give it a second to load, add a new template. If we scroll down all the way to the bottom, we're going to do a custom template. You could get into creating categories and archives and stuff like that. But for me, I just want to create a lesson template. No header, no footer. Create that. I could choose a pattern. I don't really, or I'll, I'll use this as a pattern. That's fine. And I said no header, no footer. So on this lesson template, I'm going to remove the header. We're going to remove the footer. So just the title and content. We'll publish that. I'm not going to mess with the styling settings, but if you wanted to, you could do that. And so if I reload over here, we're still using the single lesson template. But what if I had a course that was supposed to use this new simple template that I just put together? Maybe the saving strategy course. If I look at my saving strategy course, and I say that I want to use the simple template because this is single lesson is too complicated for me here. So I want to use a more simple layout. What I would do, since I know I'm going to use the saving strategy course, I'm going to go to lessons. I'm going to filter by course. We're going to filter only lessons in the saving strategy course. How many items do I have? 13? Okay, cool. Now I'm going to bulk edit these lessons. So I'm going to edit all the lessons in this course at the same time and change it to the lesson template, no header, no footer. I'm going to click update. And now all of these lessons just updated their template. And if I edit the lessons individually, we'll see over on the right, it says lesson template, no header, no footer. I could do it one by one if I wanted to, but what you just saw was I did it in bulk to hit all of them at the same time. 
The nice thing about this is now all of my lessons in the saving strategy course are using my new layout. That's the simple template that we just designed. So templates can be really powerful in that way because my uh, not every single course on my website needs to use the same template for the lessons. And so that's my favorite feature that has been unlocked here is that ability to create myself a new template and apply it to only the courses that I would like to. A little bit of a deep dive on template, but this feature is super extendable. You could do this on catalogs and category pages. You could create custom loops. There's all kinds of fun stuff you could do with the template system. So I'd encourage you to play around with that and see where could you apply a template to a page and what other kind of templates are available. The next thing and the last thing that we'll take a tour of today are patterns. Patterns are somewhat of a new concept to the WordPress core. If I look at my all patterns screen, we can see that the Lifter LMS SkyPilot theme has this footer, it has this header, and then there are also a few other patterns that come in WordPress and SkyPilot. But you could also click this little plus button at the top and create your own pattern or import a pattern from a JSON file. We might see this more in the future where people sell JSON file patterns on a, a marketplace or something like that. And so that's where we would import this. Or you could even create your own pattern or template parts. So if I create my own pattern, uh, what would this be for? Like Will's lesson layout um, quote. This might be a quote. And I could um, create this as a synced pattern. And so what a synced pattern would be is the same content applied in multiple places. So if I had a, uh, I would say a quote, so maybe it's a testimonial block. Um, this course was amazing. Save that. Okay, cool. So now that I have this, uh, this pattern saved here, I could apply the Will's lesson layout quote to multiple of my lessons. Let me go to the WordPress admin into one of my courses, like the saving strategy course. I'm going to launch the course builder and edit a few of these lessons. So if I put it in lesson with quiz, let's drop in my pattern. So clicking the plus button, we'll have my patterns here. And then Will's, Will's quote can go there. And then it can also go into another one of my lessons. If I go close that out, lesson with assignment, we'll edit that one. And we'll put Will's quote on there too. Will's lesson quote. Update. Awesome. So now we have the same block or um, the same pattern applied to two lessons. We've got the lesson with quiz that has the quote and the lesson with assignment that has the quote. But the neat feature of this synced patterns is that um, we can change this so it would say awesome instead of amazing. And that's going to update everywhere that block is. So if I view my lesson, this course was awesome. And I go to lesson with assignment, this course was awesome. So I did not need to go to two places to update the same thing because it's like using the same block in two places. So if you update it in one place, it's going to update globally across your website. That's the power of the synced block, the fully synced block there. And we also had the option to create a template part. Template parts would be like a header or a footer, or maybe you could create a sidebar. I'm trying to think of what other template parts you might have. If you have a website that is, has a lot of resources on it, you might create like a resources archive. Um, it wouldn't be a header or a footer, but it could be maybe a sidebar or a piece of your website that you could apply to different templates. So lessons might have access to like a resource library. Like if my website includes a resource library, we might do something like this, where we have a bullet point list. Can I do like a list block? And so this is like URL locking up on me. Okay, there we go. URL one, URL two, we could we could put together some resources here in any kind of format we want. I'm using a bullet point list, which is a little bit 
of a simple layout. You could do a table, you could do all kinds of stuff. But now that we have our resource library created as a template part, what we might do is explore that idea of the, the templates a little bit more. And where was my template? Lesson template, no header, no footer. If I want to include my resource library here, maybe what I would do is add a column. Column layout. Let's do this one, the 66 33 percent and what i would do is take this group put it in that column and then over here in this column i would introduce a uh, template part let me go to the uh can i go browse all um patterns and we would say these are my patterns here but if i want to do a template part I've lost it. Do I, I have to write template part? I have to write template part. So we'll put template part in the right side there and we'll choose a template part. We'll choose the resource library and then save that. And so now my new lesson template, no header, no footer, has a resource library included. So if I go back to my saving strategy course and view it and view one of my lessons, the resource library is now included as a part of this template. And so these are very similar concepts, the synced pattern and the, the template part. Uh, over time, they'll develop more features to make them uh, separate in terms of their functionality, but you can um, uh, almost use them interchangeably at this point. But I recommend using these as individual pieces that might be um, like a quote or a testimonial, or it could be a resource, like a video resource that's in multiple courses, could be a synced pattern like this. And then for the template part, this is something that would probably be more universal to your website. It wouldn't be as specific as a synced pattern. So it's a bit of a long explanation of what the breakdown is for these uh, areas inside of the full site editor. But I'd encourage you to see how you could play with these interchangeable parts and create your own interchangeable parts for your website using templates, patterns, and then some of the overview styling options on a global.